JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Citigroup are supposed to be the bedrock of American finance. But recent revelations from regulators have exposed some shocking vulnerabilities in how they manage risk. What does this mean for their future? and potentially ours. It is definitely a very, very difficult time, and it's not going to get better quickly. After the 2008 financial crisis and the Lehman Brothers collapse, a new law called the Dodd-Frank Act was put in place. It said that big banks, the ones with over $250 billion in assets, had to come up with a detailed escape plan in case they ever went bankrupt. This plan is called a living will. The idea behind the living will is to make sure that if a big bank fails, it doesn't cause a huge mess for the entire financial system. It should help protect customers' money and prevent the need for a government bailout. So JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Citigroup recently submitted their escape plans, and they didn't pass the test. The Federal Reserve and FDIC found serious flaws in their plans, especially around having enough cash, good management during a crisis, and how they would actually go about closing down if they had to. Just to give you an idea, JP Morgan alone has over $3.8 trillion in assets. That's a huge amount. If a bank that big fails, it could cause a literal financial earthquake that will be felt around the world. One of the biggest concerns is that JP Morgan hasn't clearly addressed how it would keep enough cash flowing during a crisis, especially across its many international operations. This is a major issue because in today's interconnected global economy, problems in one part of the world can quickly be felt in the other part of the world. JP Morgan operates in over 100 countries. If JP Morgan can't prove it can handle a financial crisis without needing a government bailout, it could put the entire financial system at risk. Sure, it has a liquidity coverage ratio of 129%. That basically means they have enough easily accessible cash to cover 129% of the money they expect to flow out during a 30-day crisis. But regulators say this isn't good enough. With such a complex global operation, they need a more detailed, step-by-step -step plan to prove they can handle a major crisis. On top of that, JP Morgan has over $58 trillion in derivatives contracts. These are financial bets that can become very risky if the market suddenly crashes. And if too many of these contracts go bad at once, it could wipe out JP Morgan's cash reserves and cause a chain reaction that hurts the whole financial system. Plus, Bank of America, another giant with $2.6 trillion in assets, also hasn't shown a clear plan for keeping its essential systems running if it goes bankrupt, according to regulators. Bank of America has 66 million customers worldwide, and millions depend on them for their everyday banking. Their plan for dealing with a crisis isn't foolproof. Even a small system error could lock people out of their accounts, which definitely leads to widespread panic and financial disruption. The bank's plan also doesn't say how they would keep their ATMs, branches, and online banking up and running during a major crisis. That's a huge gap, considering how many people rely on these services. Bank of America. Yeah, the U.S. government has ordered the company to pay more than $100 million to customers over illegal fees and other issues. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau says Bank of America will also have to pay $150 million in penalties for issues dating back to 2012. While the bank does have a liquidity coverage ratio of about 112.5%, meaning it has 112.5% more easily accessible cash than it needs to cover 30 days of expenses. But experts believe this might not be enough. If there's a big crisis, the value of these easy easily sellable assets could plummet, which makes them difficult to sell quickly without losing a lot of money. This means the bank might not have enough cash to pay all its debts that raises questions about its actual readiness to handle a serious economic situation. The bank also relies on short-term loans from other financial institutions for about 30% of its funding. This makes them unsafe if the markets freeze up and they can't get new loans to replace the old ones. And in that case, they could quickly run out of cash. 
Out of the three banks, Citigroup is in the hottest water. It has $2.4 trillion in assets and a massive $47 trillion in derivatives, so it's definitely exposed to risk. But what makes Citigroup particularly more dangerous is because of its global reach. It operates in over 180 countries, making it one of the most interconnected banks in the world. That makes managing a crisis incredibly tough. Regulators say it would be hard for Citigroup to get organized and respond effectively if it had to shut down. Their escape plan doesn't explain how they'd handle their operations in different countries if they failed. Even federal regulators find Citigroup $136 million for taking too long to fix internal control issues. Right here today, the FDIC has said Citigroup has a deficiency in its plan, so that's one rank lower essentially than what they've identified uh, with the other slightly problematic banks. On the other hand, the Fed has said they only identify a shortcoming with Citigroup, and because the two regulators don't really agree um, that Citigroup is deficient, they kind of escape the lowest penalty, um, the sort of worst penalty for these banks right now. This is a major issue because more than half of Citigroup's revenue comes from outside the U.S. Basically, being so spread out around the world could be Citigroup's downfall in a crisis. Another problem is that Citigroup doesn't have as much readily available cash as J.P. Morgan. Citigroup's liquidity coverage ratio is only around 116%. That means they're more likely to run out of cash during a global financial crisis. Plus, Citigroup isn't making as much money in some areas, like Latin America. If they had to suddenly shut down, these financial problems would get even worse. Also, Citigroup's derivatives exposure adds another layer of risk. While they say they have strong risk management, regulators aren't convinced their plan explains how exactly they'd get rid of those derivatives in a crisis. Without a clear plan, Citigroup could end up at the heart of a global financial meltdown. However, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and JP Morgan have chosen not to comment on the matter. On the other hand, Citigroup has stated that they are fully committed to addressing the issues identified by our regulators. They further assured that they will invest whatever is necessary to support this critical effort and are confident that the situation can be resolved without needing taxpayer bailouts or negatively impacting the financial system. But only time will tell if these banks can really handle these challenges without causing widespread damage. And one thing is clear, the risks of derivatives are still a big deal, and the stability of the global financial system is at stake. Derivatives are basically financial bets that banks make. They're complicated contracts whose value depends on how other things, like stocks or interest rates, perform. The JP Morgan Chase & Co., Citibank, Bank of America, and Goldman Sachs hold more than $203 trillion worth of these derivatives combined. These investments called derivatives are risky because they're so big and complicated that it's hard to get rid of them quickly if there's a financial crisis. JP Morgan alone had about $54 trillion worth of these derivatives, which is a whopping 28% of the total market among US banks. Citigroup and Bank of America aren't far behind, with $51 trillion and $22 trillion, respectively. This means that if one of these big banks fails, it could cause a domino effect and take down the whole financial system. Also, one of the biggest issues with derivatives is that the real risk they carry is often hidden by accounting tricks like netting agreements. For example, Citigroup now has $51 trillion in derivatives, but the real risk can change a lot depending on how the market is doing. Usually, banks use netting to make the risk look smaller by balancing some contracts against others. But if the market crashes and the other banks or companies they're dealing with can't pay their debts, the value of those contracts can go crazy. That makes the whole thing much riskier than it first looked. Back in 2022, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency found that derivatives markets could become hard to trade in during tough times. This makes the prices of investments fluctuate wildly. The percent here, a loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5% and generally across these markets. This was a problem that many didn't fully understand during the 2008 financial crisis and it's still a worry today. And even small changes in interest rates or the value of currencies 
can cause big changes in the value of derivatives. The Federal Reserve found that both JP Morgan and Bank of America might not be fully prepared for rare but extremely bad events in the market. This is worrying because in a crisis, these banks could lose much more money than they expect, which could cause problems for the entire financial system. Because if one big player can't pay its debts on derivatives, it can cause a chain reaction and affect many other institutions. This interconnectedness, along with a lack of transparency in how risks are calculated, makes it even harder for regulators to understand the risks these banks are taking. Citigroup was the collection of dozens of businesses, and so there had been issues with compliance and risk management. Also, Citigroup has been criticized for not having a good system to track its investments in derivatives in real time. This is especially worrisome because Citigroup has a lot of money invested in foreign exchange derivatives, which make up 32% of its total portfolio. These investments could be very risky if the global economy takes a downturn. And if these positions aren't carefully watched and managed, the consequences could be huge. Another big problem with derivatives is counterparty risk, meaning the risk that the other party in the deal won't be able to hold up their end of the bargain. JP Morgan, Citigroup, and Bank of America deal with thousands of counterparties all over the world, many of whom are also big financial institutions. If one of them can't pay up, it can cause a chain reaction across the whole market. To make derivatives less risky, banks have to put up collateral, usually cash or government bonds. But because they have so many derivatives, even small changes in the value of the assets can mean they have to put up a lot more collateral. For example, JP Morgan, with over $54 trillion in derivatives, needs to keep enough cash or easily sellable assets on hand to cover losses if the market turns against them. But the Federal Reserve's 2023 review showed that JP Morgan might not have enough cash if several markets crashed at the same time. Bank of America and Citigroup are also in a similar boat, where large demands for collateral could trigger a cash crunch. And to make the situation even worse, the global derivatives market is incredibly interconnected. The top 25 banks in the world hold about 86% of all derivatives. That means if just one of these big banks fails, it could trigger a chain reaction of defaults that could wreck the entire financial system. So it's really important for these banks to get better at managing their risks and for regulators to put even stricter rules in place to prevent another financial crisis. Regulators have given JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Citigroup until the end of this year, 2024, to fix the problems with their plans. If they don't meet the deadline, there could be serious consequences. The Federal Reserve and FDIC could hit them with fines, limit what they're allowed to do, or in the worst case, force them to sell off parts of their business. But meeting these demands from regulators will not be easy. They need to show a much clearer plan for managing their cash during tough times, improve how they're run, and explain exactly how they'd get rid of their huge derivatives portfolios if things go south. And for regular people like us, these problems should be a wake-up call. Even though these banks might seem too big to fail, their plans for dealing with a crisis suggest otherwise. Things still need to be done, it's business as usual, as far as I know. Everyone's well, everyone thinking it's basically that everyone's job is gone. Uh, well, that's not what we've been told in finance. When the financial system collapsed in 2008, it wasn't just the banks that suffered. It affected everyone. Jobs were lost, retirement savings took a hit, and governments had to spend a ton of money to bail things out. Will they fix their living wills in time, or are we on the brink of another meltdown? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and watch this next video here.